Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to talk about something that I'm personally very passionate about and that is compile time dependency injection using source generators. Now source generators is something that we talked about before in this channel and I have a video for that if you want to check it but it's effectively a form of beta programming where we write code that inspects our code and then writes code and adds it during compile time to the final thing that we build. That is the main idea and the fact that this exists now in C Sharp and .NET opens the possibility for things like dependency injection that is driven off of that very feature. Instead of having reflection and dictionary lookups to resolve the services, we effectively write code that writes that code during compile time and it has the safety and the performance of such a feature. And here today I have two packages, one is called strong inject and the other one is jab, which actually deliver on that promise and we're going to take a look at that, we're going to explain what problem they solve and I'm also going to give you my personal take on which one I prefer and why and hopefully get more eyes on this because I do believe that this is the future of dependency injection in .NET and I really want it to succeed. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and the same notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. Now what I have here is a few projects. I'm going to start with this first one and I'm going to show you what I have. I have an API and it's nothing special, just the bog standard um, weather forecast controller API and the only thing I've done is I removed this iWeather service, you know, usually you have an array of weathers here and, and I moved it into this weather service class with an interface and I inject that from the controller, very basic stuff, to get the weather back. So what I can do, let, just let me, let me show you what I have here, I'm going to run the project, build fine, runs fine, absolutely no problem and I'm going to ask for the weather and oh I get an exception ah uh, you know what I got that because I didn't register in startup.cs the iWeather thing as a singleton now this was intentional the reason why I made this mistake is because I've made this mistake a thousand times and that's why I'm showing it here because there is no way to know that what you're injecting will be resolved until you actually try to resolve them. Yes, you can have integration and functional tests that check for that, but as you're writing the code, nothing tells you that the thing that you press F5 to run will actually run successfully and resolve the thing that you want. Compile time dependency injection with source generators eliminates that problem because there's no way the project will compile unless everything can be resolved and I'm going to show that very same example with strong inject first which is the first package we're going to take a look at it's currently the more popular and it has more downloads and more stars on github but please give both of those projects a star on github because they do deserve it and without any further ado I'm going to show you how you can have source generated dependency injection with strong inject so what I have here is a program.cs with the main method and then I have an application class with a print date now or this should be print date time now uh, method and all we want to do is use this date time provider and this interface inject that and print date time now using it the reason why you want to do that is because you might want to mock the date time and that's a great way to do it so what you would have is a private read only i date time provider here and you would inject it from the constructor so you'd have something like this and then say something like console.write line the date time is and then you'd have the date time so date time provider uh where you go dot date time now so you'd have something like this now in your main normally you'd have a new application and you would call the method like app dot print but obviously we need to provide that implementation for the interface and we're not using the Microsoft extensions dependency injection framework we're going to use strong inject and the way to do that is first you go to NuGet and you search for strong inject and you're going to find it here we're going to inject that NuGet package see what I did there and we are going to implement a container so the way to do that is you're going to create a new class and we're going to name this di container it's very simple and in strong inject you have this concept of a top level class which is effectively your entry point to the dependency resolving tree traversal because dependency injection effectively is built like a graph behind the scenes because you have one class that needs another class and needs another class and that sort of thing so what i'm going to do is build this di container and i do have this application top level class so i'm going to copy that name 
and I'm going to implement the I container interface and I'm going to provide the application. Now I get a red squiggly line and that's because this class needs to be partial. And why does it need to be partial? Well, it will be used as a skeleton, as a starting point to start writing the code behind the scenes for us to be able to resolve the services. And because the code won't appear here, it will appear in the generated thing behind the scenes. Uh, it needs to be partial so you can create behind the scenes with a saw generator the rest of the partial class. Now we have that and let me show you how we can use it. We can go here and say using var uh, container equals new di container. We have the di container here and then you can do container dot resolve dot value to get the application. So I can say dot application or app equals this and then app dot print daytime now. Straightforward enough. So create the DI container, resolve it, and then call it. And now, obviously, I'm not providing an implementation for this anywhere. So if I run it, what I expect to see if the thing won't even build. Because strong inject detects that, hey, you're not telling me how you want, first and foremost, the application to be registered. So the top level class needs to also be registered. So we're going to the DI container, and the way to do that is to say register type of and you put the thing there. And that's effectively a singleton. Now, we go back to the program.cs and we try to run it again. And again, it will not work because we haven't registered the iDateTime provider. The way to do that is very similar. You go back here and you say, register, type of, and first you have to put the thing that you wanna resolve with, not from. So in our scenario, it's the daytime provider. And then you get to specify the scope if you want as well. You could leave it like this and just have one instance of itself. Uh, sorry, before I said that this is a singleton, it, it's not a singleton, that was a mistake. It's just a self-registered thing. Uh, so here you can specify the scope. They have different names from what you might know. Uh, in this scenario, single instance, instance per dependency and instance per resolution. So basically singleton, uh, scoped and transient. We're gonna go with singleton here and then type off the thing you want to resolve it from. So I date time provider. And now if I save that and I press F5 to run it, you will see the thing builds and it prints in the console. So great stuff. I messed up the space here. Uh, and if I go to the DI container and I press F12, which is go to implementation basically, um, auto definition, you see that I get two things. First, I get the DI container, the partial class that I just wrote, but I also get the partial class that the thing built for us, strong inject built for us. And the code looks a bit weird, but this code is your container code, your DI container code that you would either have with reflection or you'd have to write yourself if you are insane, which you wouldn't. Uh, but as you can see, simple as that, we have a DI container like that in compile time. Now you might be thinking, how do I use this with strong inject in a web API? Well, I actually have a sample here. I have the exact same thing in the weather forecast controller. There's a problem, however, with using that currently in .NET, even though I personally think that Microsoft will come up with a solution that they support for this eventually. But controllers are registered a bit weird in dependency injection, which makes it particularly hard to implement that pattern. But currently the way to get around that is again, you have the same iWeather service and weather. And in this uh, DI container, we have the controller as an instance per resolution, at effectively a scoped. And you have the weather service as a singleton, same way that I have it in the project above. And then I'm injecting the iWeather provider in the container. So I'm effectively mixing two containers here because we need to find also a way to resolve things that Microsoft will register behind the scenes for us. In this scenario, the iLogger. So we're kind of using one dependency injection into the other container uh, to hack our way around this. But if we do this with the controller and the service, we can go to the startup.cs and say add controllers. And then if you import the strong inject.extensions.dependency injection package, you can use the extension method resolve controllers through service provider, or you can use the add controllers uh, as services. They work differently and I won't bore you with that, but there is a way around it. And then if you just want to register, let's say the container to work with a controller, you can use the add transient service using container. And there's other things. You can also use add scoped service using container and add singleton. So it, it is a bit more elaborate registration and you wouldn't need this by the way. 
So it is definitely more, more elaborate registration here, but it's certainly possible to a degree. Now, I don't think that Strong Inject's API is as good as it could be, and I have a lot of things that I think are wrong with it, uh, mainly naming, it looks unfamiliar, um, you know, register and using the iContainer interface. It's wording that you don't usually see in C Sharp and can actually be used for other things as well. You know, I would prefer iDependency Injection Container or something like that. We're very used to the iService provider and the, you know, that naming and also Transient Scope Singleton. Everybody knows what that is at this point. So I have a few complaints with it, but overall it is a great framework. Now, the complaints that I have with that framework are actually resolved with my personal package of choice, which is Jab. Now, Jab takes on the same problem a bit differently. And let's take a look at that. I'm going to go here and say a job and job doesn't have a major release yet. So you have to enable pre-release uh, packages. I'm going to find it here and install it. And now with job, you will follow basically the same container approach, but job has an API and naming that's more familiar to somebody using .NET. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, the same DI container, but I'm going to use more Microsoft friendly wording, so my service provider. And the reason why I'm going to do that and I didn't do it before is because you don't actually need an interface with Jab. All you need to do is mark this as a service provider, and that's it. And now, as you can see, this says make partial. You need to make it partial for the exact same reasons as before. We're going to use that uh, partial keyword as a way to create effectively the service container behind the scenes. And now, in, in the same fashion that I registered. Uh, let me just move this to the right uh, namespace. And now in the same way that I registered my singleton in uh, Strong Inject, in Jab, all you need to do is say singleton. And yes, it does support transient and also scoped. Nice. The naming is consistent, which I really like. And here you use the thing that to me makes more sense, which is, uh, and it's a very similar to how you would do it in the actual container, the Microsoft container, which is the thing you want to refer to and the thing you actually want to resolve. So I date time provider and then comma type of uh, date time provider. And this looks way more familiar to me and I prefer it a lot over uh, Strong Inject approach. And now how do you use this? Well, you don't need a top level class like you needed in uh, Strong Inject. All you need to do is say var uh, service provider equals uh, new my service provider that's it and now you can say service provider dot and you have the create scope if you want to have a scope um, resolving and all you do is service provider dot get service very similar to how you would do it with the actual service provider so let's say date time provider here equals this and then if i want to resolve it using that i can and i can say date time now so let me just print it console dot write line uh, date time now is and here you go. And if I run this, works fine. And I get the daytime now. And this behind the scenes did also build the service container in the same fashion. However, the code generated here is also way more readable than Strong Inject. So you can actually see what's going on and debug it, which I really do appreciate that Pavel went into the effort to actually make the code that is source generated very readable. And that's another reason why I prefer it. And if you if this looks different from what I had before, I can actually make it very quickly look in the exact same way as Strong Inject, just to put the two in comparison. Um, so let me just copy this application class here and stick it in the this one. Here we go. You would have to also register application in the DI container. So I can go here and say, um, let's just say scoped. Um, type of application here we go and again if I didn't have this and I try to run it it would go boom hey I require this to be registered so I can run let me just make the singleton instead it's just a single instance of the application anyway so that is singleton now and I have this here and I'm going to resolve our application equals service provider dot get service application and we have that and now application dot print date time now and the rest of the resolving will happen uh, after that so if i just run it you will see that it still prints fine using the di container and you can see that the new code now has been generated to support the two new things here so great package i highly recommend you give java star that's where i'm putting my money to 
I really think it is a great, great, great project. Please give Pavel some love on GitHub. I'm gonna put the link in the description because I really want it to work with web APIs, which it doesn't currently. Um, so if we can get that done, I actually personally will start using it right away. Now, the last thing I wanna show you, because I did show you about the safety of using something like that, but I'm also a bit of a benchmark person. So I have a benchmark project here, which has two things. It has a Git service benchmark where we're putting the built-in DI framework that Microsoft has against Jab in resolving the actual service. And also we have the startup time where we build the container and we try to resolve some service out of it. And we have Jab and we have um, Medi, which stands for Microsoft Extensions Dependency Injection. So I have those two benchmarks. I'm gonna go ahead and run them and I'm gonna show you the results once they run. And we're gonna test for resolving a service and we're gonna test for startup times. So let's see what source generated code can do. So results are back, let's see what we have. First, we're gonna see the startup benchmark and you can see that you have 2.1 thousand nanoseconds for startup on the built-in container and Jab can only do it in 20 nanoseconds. Obviously that's because it is just compile time, there's no overhead with building the actual uh, container. And also the memory is significantly less, you have 5.7 kilobytes for the built-in and only 48 for Jab, which is super impressive. However, we can scroll up and see the first execution of the uh, resolving benchmark and it should be around here. Here we go. And you can see that resolving services with Jab will cost you one third of the time and the memory is the same. So I, I've seen this one third, it's all within margin of error. I, can, I have seen it going as fast as seven times faster and as slow as three, which is the so slowest I've seen. So it's certainly faster in any scenario because you don't have that dictionary lookup to do, which is very fast as well, but always compile time will be faster. So it's certainly a very fast and a very safe approach. I do believe it's the future of dependency injection. And I highly recommend you go and give those guys a star because they're trying to push the whole community forward. And I do think that even if I don't personally prefer strong inject, I think that they're both great projects. That's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.